Hey, so I know I put a video out and uh, about the Fuji X-T5 um, and how it was the camera I chose. Um, and I did choose it. Um, it was good. Um, but I've been through a long journey now trying to figure out um, what cameras to use, or what camera to use, um, you know, because it's expensive, so <laughs> um, I probably shouldn't be just getting tons of cameras. I don't know if you hear that in the background. That's my cat uh, eating food. She's probably going to jump up here soon, so you might see her. Um, but what we landed on was the Sony a7 IV. Um, I'm gonna rattle off a list really quick of uh, all the cameras that I have tried. Um, this video is more for the beginner, um, uh, somebody who's just getting started out and wants to do something more than their iPhone. Um, and I don't know if everybody's in the same niche as me as far as um, how they think. I got an Aries brain. <laughs> um, so slightly impatient sometimes, uh, you know, uh, I have a creative flow and once I get started with the creative flow, I have to do what it is I have to do. Um, now, um, for me, I started out with, um, a Canon. It was, a M50. Um, I think that's more the vlogging kind of camera. Um, it was just cheaper. And so I thought, okay, well, this will work, right? Um, I saw the 50 millimeter lens. Still, Canon has the best 50 millimeter lens, like budget lens that I've ever seen. Um, it's uh, pretty cheap, like 150 most of the time. Um, you know, and uh, if you do want to start out with Canon, I would say get that. But, uh, whole nother video for a whole nother time but uh, then I tried a Sony um, it was uh, the a6400 uh, felt a little bit better but um, I felt like there was something lacking because the Canon pictures I didn't like the sharpness of the M50 um, I wanted a little bit more than that I wanted it to look a little bit more professional um, I like to shoot uh, landscapes, nature, and portraits of friends and family and stuff like that. And uh, I want to eventually get into just doing portraits um, professionally at some point or semi-professionally. Um, and so the colors on that A6400 weren't that good. Um, they weren't bad. They just didn't look like the Canon. And I guess I got a little... Um, you know, put back by that. Um, and, um, so the next thing I tried was an X-T30 Mark II from Fuji. Um, and immediately loved the colors of that. Um, but then I had trouble editing them the way that I wanted. Uh, I'm not a professional editor by any means, but I do have a degree in graphic design. So I do, uh, have a background in the Adobe suite. Um, and it just, every time I looked at a picture, uh, I know that you probably shouldn't be pixel peeping. It's only really going on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, but I saw like noise, grain, like in Fuji, admittedly allows you to put grain and partially if you're going to use a Fuji, I think you should, uh, embrace the grain, <laughs> uh, in your photos, uh, it gives them that old time look, um, and at that point, I tried the A7C. Um, loved it for carrying, but then I'd been spoiled by carrying the small Fuji. So then uh, I tried the X-T5, and that's where that other video that's on my channel about cameras is about, was the X-T5. And... I fell in love with the X-T5, and I fell in love with carrying it and shooting it everywhere, and the price of the lenses, um, 
the price was cheaper for the camera. Um, and I recommend a lot of people buy that. Like, I still stand by that. I think that that's a great camera to um, be a hobbyist with. Um, it's got two card slots, which is all the other ones that I talked about before that did not have. Um, I tried the Canon RP. Um, once I go through this whole list of all the cameras I tried, uh, if you work in retail, you'd probably hate me. I used to work in retail and that would probably hate me too. But uh, my suggestion is to rent one or two and see how you feel about them because it's... Uh, it's kind of hard to go to a store now and play with anything unless you've got like a camera store near you. There's one an hour away from me that has all of them on display and you can try, but most places are getting away from having displays. So, anyway... Canon RP, uh, better than the M50, and loved every minute of the colors, but it still seemed like it was hard to do anything uh, in low light. Um, I don't do a ton of low light stuff, but if you think that you're going to do like low light things like weddings or whatever, um, probably should look into the higher end stuff. It just is what it is. Um, if you're doing weddings and stuff, you probably want two card slots also. So, uh, RP did not, uh, fit the bill for that. Not that I think I'm going to do a lot of weddings or anything like that, but I'd like to have the opportunity to leave myself open. And so you're thinking, okay, so what do you do after that? Right? Okay. So, um, R6 Mark II from Canon. Um, now that, that is a great camera, uh, awesome camera. I think she's about to come in the shot, you see her? <laughs> um, that's Soraya, by the way. Um, R6 Mark II, fabulous camera, fabulous. Um, I would say if you want to shoot Canon, that's where you need to go um, for the type of thing that I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Like I said at the beginning, like, uh, I want to eventually be semi-professional, like side business kind of thing. Um, and that one is great. Um, so why didn't I keep it? Of course, you're asking that. <laughs> why didn't you keep it, Javon? Um, yeah. Um, to be honest, the price of Canon lenses, um, whew, man. Um, even if you don't even do the 1.2s and stuff like that, like... That 50 millimeter, cool. Um, the 85, slightly higher than what you want, but um, it's starting out at least um, the 28, you know, or 35. Um, those are, um, I would say, at a higher price range for starting out. And what's funny is um, where I ended up is still in that same price range, so I don't know really why it's such a big deal. But, um, I just saw myself thinking, hey, all these other companies have other lenses, so if I don't like it, I don't have to spend tons of money on one, because, um, what if I don't like 28mm? Because who knows what they like, right, until they try it. Um, if you get a kit lens, which I... <laughs> I'm using the kit lens now, so I guess I shouldn't say anything. But, um, do I have all the focal ranges I need right now? Yes. Um, but the kit lens will probably help you figure out what range that is. Uh, 28's good for vlogging. Um, you can get away with a 50, but it depends on if you're cropping or not at that point. Um, so that's a whole thing. Um, but yeah, um just lens price done right um beautiful photos though beautiful photos if i uh figure out how to do all that um not as good at editing video as i am photos and i'm not great at <laughs> editing photos either um i take that back i'm great at photoshopping photos i'm not great at uh light rooming photos um but I'm getting there i'm trying to get there um and that's going to be a point i talk about later too but um, then I tried the Nikon Z6 II, figured I'd just try something all the way from left field. Uh, people talk about Nikon being a potato, but 
um, my first camera um, that I bought myself was a Nikon. Um, when I was, you know, like the point and shoot I bought when I was a kid. Um, uh, I think it was a, a cool pick something. It was purple. Don't ask me why I bought it. Well, it's my favorite color, but um, I bought that then and I loved it. Um, you know, had like three or four other Nikon cameras. Um, the only other really ca cameras that I've had um, are uh, Sony cameras uh, and Nikon when I was growing up. Um, I didn't really have, I had Kodaks, you know, I mean, if that counts. Um, but yeah. Um, so I'm a Nikon fan. Uh, have they stagnated a little bit and gotten a little bit behind? If you try it out, um, you, know, you try these other cameras first, uh, sort of. Um, I will say that after the Z6 II, I liked the Nikon colors, loved them, probably up there with the Canon and the Fuji, but. Um, let's just get this out of the way. The Sony colors are probably, um, depending on which camera you get, are not going to be as good as everyone else's colors out the gate, like without tweaking in some way. Um, different brands do different, but so I tried the Nikon ZF. Oh my goodness. I'm going to get another Nikon ZF probably. Um, it is like a Fuji film, but a full frame and I wish that more companies would do that. I know that Sony's doing the A7C and A7C2 and A7R, um, but um, that form factor, you have the grip, you can talk about that or whatever, but it's not meant to be like that. Um, it makes you feel like you're shooting a camera from when you were younger or whatever, or that you might have uh, taken from upstairs that your parents didn't use anymore and went and got some film and put it in there. It, it feels like that. Um, so does Fuji. They both feel like that. And uh, so, at some point, I'm probably going to have one of those two things again. Um, but I'm in the Sony system currently. Uh, I kind of ruined it. I didn't tell you what camera, though. But um, So then, at that point, I thought I was done with the Nikon ZF. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, the drawbacks that people talk about, I don't think they're big drawbacks. So... Um, I do recommend that also if you just want something for fun. Um, it's heavier than all the other cameras that I've tried though, but uh, the shape is amazing to carry with you and um, with some lenses you can slide it in the hoodie pockets, you know, uh, you know, you can slide it in here um, and it's great. Um, so why don't you keep that? Uh, I'm really picky if you haven't noticed, I'm really picky. Um, so. What I started being upset about with the Nikon is not the colors, um, not the feel, not the ergonomics, not the results, because uh, all those things are great, uh, not the lens prices. Um, what really happened with the Nikon, to be totally honest, is, um, I don't know, there's something about the way that it autofocuses and the way that you have to think about autofocus with that. Um, the way that you have to literally uh, decide what autofocus thing you're going to use. And once you do, though, it's amazing. It tracks amazingly. Um, but um, it's not for the amateur or beginner. You have to really think about that. But I will say that thanks to that, uh, I am better at picking out what focus modes I want at certain times and what to do when certain things don't work on this camera or any other camera. Um, and so, uh, like I said, probably going to get another one one day. Or maybe if they come up with a two or something, definitely going to get that. Um, and then I got a Sony a7 III. <laughs> um, a7 III was cool. Um, I think that's a good all-around camera for the price. Like, if you don't want to spend too much, they go on sale all the time. You can find a used one for probably around a thousand dollars right now. Um, maybe even less, depending on you know the condition of it. 
Um, and I would recommend that a lot of people do that and, and just start there and be on that for two years or so and um, figure out if what you like and don't like and then your next camera look for that. Um, because the lenses are the thing. Like, you, you watch a lot of YouTube videos and they'll tell you, like, lenses, lenses, like, don't worry about the camera body or the lenses. A great lens will make your mediocre camera body look better. It's true. It's true. I've tried it. <laughs> um, I've tried cheap lenses and on great bodies. Um, so I started getting, like, Mikey lenses and stuff like that. Okay. If you don't, you know, know what you're doing. But at this point, it's almost been a year of me trying all these things. Um, and uh, if you just need the lens that every once in a while you might be shooting 85 or something, but you don't shoot it all the time, okay, sure, you know. But um, but you know what I didn't like about the A7 III? You ready? The colors. We spend a lot of time doing a lot of editing and could never get it to technically fully look like the Canon or the Nikon colors. Just couldn't. Just couldn't. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. Um, and I don't know why um, this is a thing, but let's stop doing this. Let's, let's normalize not trying to make your camera colors look like Canon or Nikon colors or Fuji colors or whatever. Um, just edit your photo to your liking and I'm assuming uh, people will either love or hate the way you do it, but you'll eventually get people who seem to like your style of your thing, your taste. Um, and then just do that on whatever camera you get and whatever lens you get, um, whether you use Adobe or Capture One or whatever. But um, So I heard the A7C had better colors. True. So I did that. And uh, that kind of got me to that Nikon area area where the ZF and the Fuji area where it's a little bit smaller, not as big of a body. Um, and I'm not going to take a lot of time on the A7C. Um, I think it's a great beginner camera. Doesn't have two card slots. Not necessarily important if you're just hobbying, right? Um, but what I didn't like about the A7C... Let me see if you can guess it first. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to give you a second. Let me see if you can guess it. All right. Um, you ready? So the A7C, better colors. Um, just honestly, at some point after trying all those cameras, the dials, even Fuji, you know, they have the dials on the top, but it also still has a front dial and a back a rear dial. Um, A7C has that one dial, and then it, exposure compensation wheel and then you got your ISO wheel you know um, which you can make do something else and then have your ISO as the right button and then spin it um, it's a lot of getting used to once you've used all these other cameras with a front dial and a back dial it just is I don't care what anybody says <laughs> um, so then the A7C2 came out um, right when I returned the A7C um, and front dial takes all of the negatives that I'm talking about and turns them into positives, except for the one card slot. So, okay, if you're new to photography, maybe you don't know about the dual card slots and why that's a thing and why people are so into it or why they make a big deal out of it. Um, I've had maybe in my lifetime, probably one or two SD cards not work uh, after a while. I mean, they end up working again after reformatting or whatever. Um, don't buy cheap cards. That's step one. Uh, two. See this hard job? It's an Apple logo on it. I used to work at Apple for about 10 years. Um, this hard job right here used to be my backup for my MacBook. Um, this drive no longer works. I can plug it in. It doesn't show up on anything. Uh, you know, um, if I plug that in, why do I keep it, by the way? Because it has some stuff on it. And if you plug it in long enough, 
sometimes like three hours later it'll show up. Um, so I'm hoping one day it'll show up and I can get stuff off of it and that's why I have it still. Um, but say you're shooting something you really like. It might not even necessarily have to be a wedding, but it could be maybe, um, you know, you're shooting something for a friend. Maybe they want engagement photos or something and they ask you because they don't want to pay the high price of a professional that does it. Um, and your files don't work. Then what? Um, I mean, it's something to think about. If we're going to maybe do this and do it for a longer period of time, maybe you want that. And maybe you don't need it all the time, but maybe you want that um, peace of mind. And that peace of mind is probably worth an extra $500. Like, depending on who you are and what you do and what you want to do and what you think you might do eventually. Um, so, uh, someone at Best Buy hipped me onto the Panasonic S5 II. Uh, that, for that price range, especially if they're still doing that deal where you get the lens for free with it. So you can pick like the 50 millimeter. If you pick an 85, you got to pay like 50 more dollars or whatever. Um, you know, or you can get the 35 and it's like a bundle deal that they have. I don't know if they still have it, but. Um, that is an all-around beast of a camera, especially for video. Um, I don't do a lot of video, but the capabilities on that, right? Um, so why didn't I keep that? Uh, it does this weird thing with exposure. It's, it's so weird where the preview you get on your screen, even though you got live preview set up or whatever they call it for Panasonic, uh, it shows you what it thinks you should be exposing before it shows you what you currently are exposing until you press half press the shutter and then it will show you what you are exposing. Um, and that's just different than every other camera. And I looked and I, I, I scourged forums and stuff to try to figure out if there's a way to make that not happen. It's just the way that it works. Um, it's the way that it happens. Um, um, and so you just gotta be cool with that or not be cool with that. And I'm not cool with that. Um, if I'm off, just let me be off. Maybe I want to overexpose my, my, uh, background to get a better shot. So, um, yeah. Um, another thing that I want. Um, so what did I do then after that? I said, you know what? Uh, I made that video about the X-T5. I really, 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 really am cool with the Fuji. I can deal with the grain and I can deal with the worming in uh, Lightroom. Google that. Google that. That'll send you down a whole rabbit hole because once you see it, you can't unsee it. But some people are uh, more, got, got more of a Jedi brain. So more some people can just get over that. Um, and for your you know, just casual photos, you probably can, but once you see it, some people like me, oh man, I can't not see it. So, um, I was like, all right, I can probably get over it. So what did I do? I went and got an, a, um, X-H2. Um, I was like, you know what? This is more like a regular camera body, it has the, all the dials in the regular way. Um, you know, uh, less casual, so I can probably get a couple more good shots in quicker because, you know, there's a difference between tweaking your little dials on the top of a Fuji and then just flicking your dials like this with, you know, um, it is, it just, it's faster. Um, so if you need to get the shot, you need to get the shot and you don't have time to look to see if you're at a hundred or whatever. And, uh, you know, um, don't get me wrong, doing that got me better at exposing and, you know, seeing what I like. And uh, so I do think that that's something that you should look into. Um, you should kind of stop and think and, you know, uh, take your time with the shot. Um, compose a little bit better. Um, so my next thing. Um, no. 
<laughs> that's too bulky for a Fuji. That's, if you if you use any other Fujis, that's too bulky. It is. It just is. Um, great idea. Just too bulky. Now, if you, you choose to do Fuji as your professional thing, you probably should get one of those. Um, XS20. Um, kind of a little bit smaller. Um, you know, but it's a whole slew of things with that. Where, you know... Um, the backups and all that stuff. You know, that's the single card slot thing again. Um, so, what did I do? I took everything back. Shipped all my lenses back to Amazon. Um, and got a Sony A7C II, like I said. Um, did that. Went to the Fuji. So, where did I end up? Um, I'm shooting right now on an A7 IV. Um, I think that it's funny because if you think about it, it's uh, almost the exact opposite of all the things that I said that I liked. But the colors are better. It's got two card slots. The video's good. The camera lens prices, you've got a whole range of third-party lenses you can use. And um, I think it's a, the great, the best all-around camera that Sony makes. That's it. Bye. You had enough or should I continue?